Hey everybody, welcome to Clopepe Vineyards. I'm Wes Hagen, I'm the vineyard manager and winemaker here at Clopepe. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, sunlight and how sunlight influences the vintage and what uh, the grapevine does with sunshine. Sunshine is really important in the way that we grow grapes. You can't grow anything without it. Um, Galileo said sun, wine is sunlight held together by water, which I think is kind of a cool way of looking at it. So we're gonna look at this vine behind me. This is a Wenty Chardonnay vine here at the uh, very sort of bottom in the sandiest soil that we grow in in Clopepe. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about sort of what sunlight does to a grape and how sunlight influences the vintage. Obviously in California, we have the advantage of having lots of sunlight. In fact, I like to say sunlight is sort of the currency of California wine. So the key is how do we get sunlight into the bottle? And this is what we do. This vine has been shoot positioned, which means we've talked all the shoots into these shoot positioning wires to absorb as much light as possible. These vines are running north-south, so as the sun comes over east-west, it has full exposure uh, onto uh, the uh, east side in the morning and the west side in the afternoon. So we treat the canopy different depending on if we're de dealing with the east or the morning side or the west and the afternoon side, and this is what we do. We basically are gonna start pulling leaves away from the fruit so the fruit becomes highly exposed to sunlight. Now we can pull more leaves here in the Santa Rita Hills than almost anywhere in California because of our fog, our cool temperatures, our wind, and what I like to call our hypercoastal influence. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling as many leaves as I can from the interior of the canopy and basically opening up the morning side of the canopy to 100% of the morning sunlight. I'll leave some leaves up here to sort of be a sombrero effect so when the sun gets into the most intense part of the day, the sun comes down on the leaves but doesn't hit the clusters uh, just in case we hit a heat wave. So on this side of the canopy, morning side of the canopy, I'm going to do 100% canopy gaps and almost 100% leaf pulling, which means I want zero leaf layers between the sunlight and the fruit. And if I pull this leaf and show you, if this leaf is in front of that sun, that's 90% of the photosynthetically active radiation, which we measure in micro Einsteins per meter per second. So what you kind of have is when you pull the leaf away, suddenly so much sun gets on the fruit, and what impact does that sun have on the fruit? Well, first of all, a grapevine develops the flavor and the color uh, really as a result of climatic influence. One thing that a grape does is uh, as soon as it finishes flowering, like this cluster right here, it basically uh, needs sunlight to start developing um, the anthocyanins, which actually are the color compounds in red grapes that actually protect it against sunburn. So we want to expose it to uh, sunlight early so it develops um, enough, uh, enough bloom, which is a waxy substance, or the color in red grapes that will protect it against sunburn. Early exposure to sun is very important. This is a white grape, so we're not really too concerned about developing color compounds. What we're really concerned about is getting enough sun on this cluster to really uh, get rid of all of the pyrazine character. Pyrazines uh, exist in all wine grapes. They taste like green bell pepper. Uh, so we want to get that sort of uh, herbaceous vegetal flavor out of the grapes. And what we want to put into the grapes is basically a nice floral high tone fruit character that comes from full sun exposure. So we're going to give 100% sun exposure on the morning side. You couldn't do this in Amador or Napa. It would burn the, burn the fruit to a crisp. But in the Santa Rita Hills, we can open up the morning side to 100% sun exposure. And then on the back side, First of all, we'll pull all the interior leaves, and this is called scooping, basically getting all the interior leaves. So there won't be a lot of water vapor coming off the back leaves and causing a lot of humidity in the canopy, which can increase uh, the amount of uh, mildew and rot. Also, imagine when we spray this vine, when the canopy's open like this, the spray is gonna be really efficient. So that uh, efficacy of the spray is also very important. This is also a way that we can influence the vine with no chemicals. This is all 100% hand labor, which is awesome too. So we're gonna do about 40. So at, in the end, when we look through the, the canopy, we should see about 60% canopy gaps, which means you should be able to see 40% leaves and 60% air. So I'm saying this is just about where we want it to be, a couple more leaves. And then we want to make sure that the afternoon side's a little more protected so if we get a heat spike, we're not burning the fruit on the afternoon side. And now we can see the fog's lifting a little bit, got a little bit of the marine layer burning off, and here I am in this beautiful sunshine, as just as if I almost expected. And uh, this is proper, uh, a proper canopy exposure right here. And we're going to be turning the sunlight into sugar in the grapes, and then we're going to turn the sugar uh, into, uh, into uh, alcohol. So really, these leaves are absorbing light and helping us uh, to... Uh, 
to basically create alcohol from sunshine. So that's pretty cool stuff. That's sunshine at Clopepe Vineyard, and I hope you learned something. Feel free to la uh, leave a comment or a question. Uh, I love questions, and if you have a question that you or uh, something sub subject that you'd like me to talk about in subsequent videos, let me know. We'd love to uh, we'd love to share. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week.